change it? I don't know how to do that, actually. Oh, okay. um, you do control F and then write in providing. Or command F, depending on whether you've got a Mac or a PC. I'm on, um, oh, wow. Well, what maybe somebody else can read. Would somebody else like to read? Because that mine's not paging. Sure, sure. Not. Okay. Did you say you would, Linda? I just said it's not. Mm -hmm. I would if you'd like me to. Yeah. Um, what I have is tell Bill he is right in providing you with the consistent strength you need to get. And he needs to offer. Your instability and his weakness have resulted from bad karmic choices. And your relationship now is crucial for the future. You must both exert every effort to restore it to what it once was. Both of you are correcting where you have failed before. This has already, already enabled correcting where you have failed before. This has already enabled you to perform a very unexpected role. Hang on a second, someone's coming on. In your own joint salvation and the salvation of many other children. I will entrust and the salvation of many other children and I will entrust and the, I'm stuck increasingly to you. Okay, what page did we say it was? 63? That's yeah. right. These are by no means chosen at random. I got it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> um, tell Bill he is right in providing you with the consistent strength you need to get and he needs to offer. Your instability and his weakness have resulted from bad karmic choices and your relationship now is crucial for the future. You must both exert every effort to restore it to what it once was, what it once was. Both of you are correcting, both of you are correcting where you have failed before. This has already enabled you to fulfill an unexpected role in your own joint salvation and the salvation of many other children I will entrust increasingly to you. These are by no means chosen at random. Bill should know that his preparation is not only in terms of sharing in the results of your better application of some rather unusual talents, his own role, which he will understand after his preparation is complete, will be equally surprising. He will need your help then as you need his strength now. <clears throat> That's interesting. Uh-huh. <laughs> Note. Note that you do not need his help as a scribe because you develop this ability by your own efforts and finally place them at my disposal. By leading, by lending you his strength, he strengthens himself. When he gains this through his own efforts, he will need your help in a very unexpected way. But this is just another example of this reciprocal nature of miracles. Equality, this is good stuff here. Equality, does not imply homogeneity now. When everyone has everything, individual contributions to the sonship will no longer be necessary. When the atonement has been completed, all talents will be shared by all of the sons of God. God is not partial. All of his children have his total love and all of his gifts are given freely to everyone alike. Except you become as little children means, unless you fully recognize your complete dependence on God, you cannot know the real power of the Son 
in his true relationship with the Father. You and Bill do have special talents, which are needed for the celestial speed up at this time. But note that the term speed up is not one which relates to the transcending of time. That's why he talks about, and um, it was on, I, I, in my book, it was on page 53, where he talks about the horizontal versus the vertical. Um, and that was, that's what someone had asked at one point. In your oh. book, you mean the sparkle edition? No, no, no. I have this, I have a copy, um, a Xerox copy of these for some reason. And, um, and the page numbers are different, although the material is the same. I don't know how that happened. Hmm. So, so one of the things that he talks about, and I don't remember whether we discuss it or not, was the difference in transcending time, which is sort of like um, the vertical. It's like it's like rising yourself up in revelatory experiences. So you're beyond time yourself. When he's talking about miracles, what he's talking about are miracles are interpersonal that happen between brothers. And it shortens the time that is necessary for the atonement to become completed. So miracles actually shorten the need for time. Whereas, and that's, that's on... Um, now I'm all confused. That's brother to brother. The, the, that's the horizontal access. That's between brothers and brothers here in space time. So when now the Holy Spirit and Jesus have something to do with this, which is why he asked them to check with him as to which miracles to work, because it's more beneficial to check with him because he knows where the, need, the miracles can be utilized to save the greatest amount of time for the entire sonship, the entire brotherhood. Whereas Helen had the ability to go, um, to really go vertical and to have revelation. And in the condition of revelation, you're already outside of space and time. So time is is sort of eliminated in the um, in your vertically rising into a revelatory state, which is got to do directly with um, with with your relationship to God. When time is abolished, and all the sons of God have come home, no special agents will be necessary. But do not underestimate the power of special agents now, or the great need there is for them. I do not claim to be more than that myself. No one in his right mind, a term which should be specially noted, ever wants either more or less than that. Those who are called on to witness for me now are witnessing for all men as I am. Oh, here we, we, here we go into this. The role of priestess was once experienced, was, was once to experience revelations and to work miracles. The purpose was to bring those not yet available into direct revelation in proper focus for them. Heightened perception was always the essential priestess attribute. And here's a note. For the first, this, uh, this, this morning was the first time I ever said that I'd be honored if there were any notes he wanted me to take. He said he did. So G G Helen had a habit of taking notes at inappropriate times, which caused her to not live a scheduled life based on the, you know, based on a profession. 
So she would do things and the taking the notes would get in the way. It's not that the notes were bad to take. It's just that Jesus was trying to tell her, always ask me. Ask me and I'll let you know when the best time to take the notes is so that it doesn't get in the way of what your duties are in the world of space and time. And that was important because it was about efficiency. He's talking about efficiency and miracles are a way of, of efficiently dealing with time. So the asking of him was important to him, both as a way of Helen finally listening and showing him he listens and follows directions, and also as a way of her not wasting her own time in what she was doing and what she had to do. Helen, neither Bill nor I is really clear about how sexual impulses can be directly translated into miracle impulses. The fantasies that I mentioned yesterday provide an excellent example. Now switch the pronoun references or it will be too confusing. I'm not sure. Fantasies are distorted forms of thinking because they always involve twisting perception into unreality. Fantasy is a debased form of vision. Vision and revelations are closely related. Fantasy and projection are more closely associated because both attempt to control external reality according to false internal needs. That's interesting. Both both attempt to control external reality according to false internal needs. So you think you have these needs and if they happen then you something something will be a particular way. So you pursue the need that you think you have, thinking that it's going to produce um, space-time in the way you want it, let's say. So you think there's a way that things are supposed to go in the world. So you have fantasies about how that's going to happen, and then you pursue the fantasy, thinking that in that pursuit, they will allow the way you are thinking and what you're thinking to occur the way it's meant to. And what Jesus is saying is, that's not very helpful. <laughs> live and let live happens to be a very meaningful injunction. Twist reality anyway, and you are perceiving destructively. This reality was lost through usurpation, which in turn produced tyranny. I told you, you were now restored to your former role in the plan of atonement, but you must still freely choose freely to devote your heritage to the greater restoration. And I believe in that he's talking about listening to him and allowing A Course in Miracles to become the book that it was necessary in order for the entire sonship to learn a better way of um, both being in the world and relating to each other in the world. Eddie. Yes. And I think that's a good reference to all of us too, that we've been restored to our correct place finally. And all these notes between Helen and Bill are good examples of our own relating. Well, I think so too. I mean, I, I, I think that um, there's no accidents in salvation. And there's a particular way, there's a particular reason why, you know, the group of people that comes together, comes together. And it really is to validate something that we already know and to help each other along the way that we're all going because we've all decided we're going the same way. So if salvation is a collaborative venture, it helps to collaborate and it also helps to experience the joining with your brother so you know you're not alone. And that's one of the benefits I find in doing what we're doing the way we're doing it and coming together. You know, I, I, like I've been saying, it's important that we read these notes because they're here for us to, to learn from. 
But the truth of the matter is, at a certain point in time, they're almost just an excuse for us to join together uh, and to participate as one and to join with each other in the atonement and to know that we're not alone and to know that, you know, we, we all have a function and we validate each other's function. Um, because as I said, like, I, I, I find, you know, I find Marianne's notes to be equally as helpful and equally as true as, as the one that Helen took down for sure. And when I ask other people, you know, they hear the same voice in the notes. And, and I think that's helpful for all of us to see. Um, you know, and in that sense, you know, he talks about a scribe as being a special agent with a special function. And I think that's important for people to know and to have validated so that they can trust in themselves more and more and trust in their brothers who they are one with. And in that, miraculous things can occur. But you must still choose freely to devote your heritage to the greater restoration. As long as a single slave remains to walk the earth, your release is not complete. And I would say that his own release is the same way, which is why he's involved in this. Because as you know, he was a man just as we were. We are people. Complete restoration of the sonship is the only true goal of the miracle-minded. That Sexual. is a beautiful description of my understanding of a bodhisattva. <laughs> <laughs> the way I see the concept. I never know what those things are, actually. Bodhisattva, enlightenment being. Oh, okay. They, they are someone who, like Jesus or Buddha, who has completed their, their own individual function in accepting oneness, but decide to stay around and help the rest of us until we have so joined completely in that oneness. That's funny because I was, um, one of the people who actually was instrumental in the center in Australia was, was a, a brother named Christopher Summer. And um, I hadn't seen him in a long time, and he was in a meeting that we had the other night. Um, and he's, you know, we were just talking, he was talking about some of the things that he's doing now. And one of the things that he's talking about was the way of love, um, in, the, in the book, The Way of Love. And what he was saying was, at a certain point in time, the question that is being asked in the way of love is um, at the point where you're, where it's capable for you to make the decision to no longer be in the world or to transition, let's call it. We think of it as death, but it's really just a, it's a transition. Death is sort of a, a different idea than transitioning. Um, where, 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 you know, we can make the choice to transition or the question is, are you willing to stay around to help your brothers who are not yet ready to transition learn of the truth? Um, and, and, you know, I have, I have a particular way of understanding it because I'm not a way of love person. Um, and, but I do understand that that's sort of the, you know, the, that's sort of the question. You know, are you willing to help with friendship? And how, how can you best serve both God and man with the particular understanding that you have come to? Since, you know, as it says, everyone must come to know that there is no world. Everyone must come to know that they're, they're one with God. And this is a dream. This is a hallucination. It's not a reality. Now, how that happens to each and every one, it's, everything's already been preordained. However, there are ways in which the energy of that oneness can help the miraculous process be, and this, which is this, which is a way of speeding it up to occur. So I think, you know, in that sense, it's true. 
people are asked to like hang around and not transition so that they could be helpful to the entire cause since the, the totality of the return is based on all the sons who decided to um, be separate from God, let's say, um, um, come to know. We came here as one and we leave as one. And hanging around can mean either hanging around expressing through a physical body or like Claire. <laughs> yeah. Being around on the other, what we call the other side. Right. Here to help us. That's true, you know, and right now, I, 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 I think, you know, a lot, we've all had a ton of experiences at this point in time. You know, I talk about the time when I was dying, I was dead on the floor, and I was leaving my body, and Jesus says, you know, that's not going to solve your problem. And so I, I didn't leave, I chose to stay. You know, we've all had experiences that validate the truth. And it's not that we can make someone else choose truth, but we can help lessen the fear of the truth because that's what we've all been afraid of. We've all been afraid of God. In any way, we can help our brothers lessen that fear and join in, you know, the miraculous speeding up of time is really helpful. And, you know, especially in the state of the world right now, you know, the stuff that's going on is really crazy. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is the, the light sort of dissolves the form. And the more, the, the more, how do I say this? The more the nature of the split or the nature of pain becomes aware, the more people try to solve the problem through ways of the world, rather than recognizing there's only, there's only one problem and there's only one solution. You know, the, the only problem is we think we're separate from God, and the only solution is to come through the experience that shows you that you're not. Yet the pain of being separate from God is everything that everyone here suffers from. So we invent these reasons why we experience pain and suffering, and then we go about to solve the problem based on the invented the inventions that we we made it up, and they never work. And we could do it over and over again. And you know, if enough of us are in the energy of the certainty of what does solve the problem, at least we can offer it to our brothers, both it, through energy, just through being who we are, as well as when they ask a question, to tell them the truth of what we know. And, and, and I think that's important at this moment in time. And it's one of the reasons why I think it, you know, uh, it, like with, 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 when Jimmy has so many people or when there are a lot of people in the afternoon, the nature, of, the diversity of people throughout the world helps because we're joining together for a single purpose. And, you know, there are more and more people who are being validated in their experiences so as to share them throughout the world. And, and I think that, and I think that's necessary at this point in time. You know, everybody all over the world, we're not going to be able to travel every place in the world. And there are people everywhere, and those people could use a reminder. Those people can use the help that a brother, you know, has received through his own sort of experiences and share the strength, hope. And it's one of the things they say in the 12-step program, you, you share your strength, hope, and experience. Now, what a person does with that, who knows? But in the sharing of your strength, hope, and experiences, there's another way for other people to look at this that they hadn't looked at before because not everybody's going to read A Course in Miracles. Not everybody's going to read Way of Mastery. And they don't have to. <laughs> no, they don't. As a matter of fact, you know, many people, you know, it's interesting for me. I had this, I had an experience before I received the course, and the course told me what had happened to me in the experiences. And, 
you know, I learned why. Now, there are a lot of people out there who have these experiences. I had a friend named Mark in California. He had an experience and he went absolutely crazy because he had, you know, an untrained mind can accomplish nothing because he had no idea what had happened to him. And without the reference, you know, he, he just didn't know what to do with it. He was unable to communicate with anybody. He thinks everybody, he, he, he hears questions and doesn't understand them. And they hear him and they, he doesn't understand them because there was no way, no way for those minds to meet. But when he first, when I noticed what was happening and, and asked him about the experience, finally, there was a, there was a touch point where he could begin to understand and not be so crazy about what happened to him, begin to understand the nature of the experience and why we have these experiences. And I think that's happening around the world. I think people have these experiences all over the world. They have no idea why they have them. They have no idea what to do with them. And they have no idea what to think about them. And this type of thing can make you crazy. And that's the context in which Jesus encourages us to have regular holy instance. Yes. In that space, the energy broadcasts out, not by our doing, but just by the it by God's grace, but by, by who we are. And it's there to help people. And then who knows what kind of circumstances will come into play. Right. Under, under Jesus or whoever you ascribe that energy to direction and it can be in any faith with any terms absolutely someone's connected with that energy in their heart mm -hmm. and, and it's also true to me this the stronger that re, the energy becomes based on the joining together of brothers the more intense the pain and suffering gets to those who are experiencing it as a separation but don't know what it's about and, and and things get really crazy in the world you know i, I was you know when i was watching all the stuff going on in the um in, in the riots you know there were there were so many different sides finally at one point in time the protesters were protesting against the protesters <laughs> because because you know, they just needed something to protest against and you and you have things you get people coming together who were four schools being closed. There was a rally the other day and both sides chose to have the rally in the same place. Now, the truth of the matter is, the reason why they're experiencing the need to do something is based on the frustration and not knowing what to do with the pain of separation, which is the only reason why anyone here experiences pain. So they make up these false situations and think that the solution is gonna be based on what they made up, and it never is. It just intensifies. There's less satisfaction in what they're doing, and people are turning against each other in their own streets, on their own blocks. And, and the ability to, to sh help people understand that it's not their neighbor that they're against, but they're against themselves and they treat their neighbors as they treat themselves. It becomes important. I think anyway, I may be completely out of my mind. It's so important for us to surrender all this, all our perceptions of this in a holy instant and to ask for the guidance. Absolutely. I, I, see, I think that's the biggest part. I think the biggest part is, is realizing you don't know what to do with anything and asking for the guidance. Mm -hmm. What should I do? Because we don't know. And it may not even seem to be related to what we think the problem or the situation. Absolutely. Is. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that, I think Jesus deals with that with Helen, as a matter of fact. He does. So as he said here, sexual fantasies are distortions of perception by definition. They are a means of making false associations and obtaining pleasure from them. Man can do this only because he is creative. But although he can perceive false associations, he can never make them real except to himself. As was said before, man believes in what he creates. 
If he creates a miracle, he will be equally strong in his belief in that. And that's important. The strength of his conviction will then sustain the belief of the miracle receiver. No fantasies, sexual or otherwise, are true. Fantasies become totally unnecessary as the wholly satisfying nature of reality becomes apparent. And the interesting thing about that, the, holy sat the more the wholly satisfying nature of reality becomes apparent, the less we really want anything of the world. Because, and, and, and the more we want to give up the world, which increases more pressure on us here in space and time, which then we could use the energy of that to be miraculous with our brothers. The sex impulse is a miracle impulse when it is in proper focus. One individual sees in another the right partner for procreating the stock and also for their joint establishment of a creative home. This does not involve fantasy at all. If I am asked to participate in this decision, the decision will be a right one too. In a situation, so that's what he's saying, ask him, just ask. And if it's the right thing to happen, he will let you know, and then you can decide if you want to do the right thing or pursue this in your own way. In situation, in a situation where you or another person or both experience inappropriate sex impulses, know first that this is an expression of fear. Your love toward each other is not perfect. And this is why fear arose. Turn immediately to me by denying the power of the fear and ask me to help you place, to replace it with love. This shifts the sexual impulse immediately to the miracle impulses and places it at my disposal. Then acknowledge the true creative worth of both yourself and the other. This places strength where it belongs. Note that sexual fantasies are always destructive, destructive or depleting in that they perceive another in an inappropriate creative role. Both people are perceived essentially as objects fulfilling their own pleasure drives. This dehumanized view is the source of the depleting use of sex. Freud's description is purely negative as a release from the unpresent. He also observed that the tension from the id impulse never completely abates. What he should have said is that the shift from miracle impulses to sexual impulses was debilitating in the first place because of the level confusion it involved. This set up a state in which real release was impossible. Note also that Freud's notion of sex was as a device for inducing relaxation, which he confused with peace. Hmm. Inappropriate sex relates only in the sense that it may induce physical sleep. Inappropriate sex relaxes only in the sense that it may induce physical sleep. The miracle, on the other hand, is an energizer. It always strengthens and never depletes. It does induce peace, and by establishing tranquility, not relaxation, it enables both giver and receiver to enter into a state of grace, which is what you were talking about, Mary. Here, his miracle-mindedness, not released from tension, is restored. Tension is the result of a built up, a building up of unexpressed miracle impulses. This can be truly abated only by releasing the miracle drive, which has been blocked. Converting it to sexual libido merely produces further blocking. Never foster this illusion in yourself or encourage it in others. An object is incapable of release because it is a concept which is devoid of creative power. 
And when he's talking about an object, he's talking about the body. So he's saying using the body to get the result will never be the solution. It's utilizing the mind in a different way so as to utilize who we are here in space and time for the purpose of, um, you know, shortening time and increasing our ability to be restored to miracle mindedness. And in that state, we recognize grace. And in, in that state of the building up of tension of unexpressed miracle impulses, it's in, we gradually learn what we need in the moment to do to begin to release that tension. Yes. You know, sometimes it's just dancing and singing and just letting the universe express through to get that tension, to get the energy, the essential energy flowing through the body and that connection with everything around. But there's all sorts of ways. Some people do it with cooking, <laughs> like Vicky. <laughs> It's just really, there's all sorts of ways the love that we let flow when we do things. So he says an object is incapable of release because it is a concept which is devoid of creative power. Mm -hmm. The recognition of the real creative power in yourself and others brings release because it brings peace. Yes. The peace of God which passeth understanding can keep your hearts now and forever. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good place to stop. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you, Teddy. Thank you, Teddy. <laughs> I, 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 Thank you, Teddy. That was great. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I just really find these things amazing. And when I was reading them the other day, um, because I have people who ask them for me and they write and tell me how incredible they are. But I was reading the other day and I realized that there really are, there are people who are Course in Miracles students who really aren't ready for this deeply personal communication with Jesus. They like it theoretically and they like to utilize it in a particular way of thinking that they're, you know, it's a way of becoming spiritual or a way of addressing their spiritual needs. But the truth of this is these are really practical. This is really a very practical way to um, be in space and time and not of space and time and utilize ourselves as that, that center point between the two of them. But it's also important to recognize that the intellectual attraction of it is an important step. In the oh, absolutely. Living this way. Anything, as far as I'm concerned, anything that gets people to pick up the book and pick up A Course in Miracles and read it, mm -hmm. you know, that's why, you know, there's, a, there's places, there's um, like there's a Facebook page and people get into arguments about what this means. And there are some people say, we shouldn't argue, we shouldn't argue. And they're not really arguments, they just disagree in the meaning. But the ability for some people to post something allows other people to post things that they think that they could never have gotten out of themselves without what people what what that person said and i think it's very helpful for people to express themselves and to be able to, to hear what other people have to say about it because none of us are completely true in that regard and we're only hearing it one way and the ability to hear it in a number of different ways and realize, wow, that could be true, too, is the impetus to finally say, wait a second, man. I could ask directly and find out for myself in another way. And that communication is important. That's what Jesus is all this is about, finally asking him. We had a beautiful example of this on Step Into Heaven this morning with talking about COVID and different people's views of COVID. And it's important to get those out into the presence of love. To yes. Ask mm -hmm. For what's appropriate for this person in this time in this place. That's why. That's why I think it was important when we read it in the beginning, um, that especially in this time of COVID, when um, Jesus 
you know, in one way you're saying this is all an illusion and none of it really works. But at the same time, he was saying, no, Helen, Bill, Bill and Helen should go get vaccines. Mm -hmm. you no, know, he wasn't disapproving or judging them. He said, no, it would be helpful for you to get them. Mm -hmm. That's good to know that we're not judged for that. And it's not something that we should shy away from. One way or the other, in the entirety, none of it is real. Not just one part of it isn't real. The, the, the not getting of them is just as unreal as the getting of them, mm -hmm. in that sense. So but we what we should do individually, if we don't know what to do, finally we get to the point where we ask. And when we really ask because we don't know, uh, as Jesus said to Helen about shopping at one point in time, you know, if you just because you don't know where to go, ask because you don't know where to go. And because your mind is open, I could talk to you about anything. Allow anything to help you, you know, loose your mind and open it up to a, to a higher authority. And you're doing good. Because he'll take any, he'll take any, any open space for any reason it's open and help people learn. So I, I, I just find these incredible. And I just realized the other day, there really are people who are not ready to, to take these, you know, and I could see why it was given to Bill to edit them and for the reason he was given to edit and, the re and, and why he was given to edit it. So that it didn't induce more fear, it helped people understand fear and it helped people have a way to get out of fear. And these are really personal and, you know, I know for myself, like in situations I'm involved in right now, this is important stuff. It's important to hear. Yes. It's important to share. It's important to join with our brothers. Mm -hmm. And whatever helps us, allows us to do that. So be it. I mean, there's a thing, there's a, there's a line in the last part of the course when Jesus said, not even this book is real, not even the course of miracles is real. Mm -hmm. But we begin to think about, you know, what's useful, what's helpful, and what, what's, what helps us and what's not useful. What is useful for us in fulfilling our function in the atonement and what is not useful to us in fulfilling our function in the atonement. And that's the way in which decisions or things of the world and situations that we're placed in should be looked at. So. Yes, that's beautiful. Thank you. That's all I have to say right now. Thanks, Terry. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Love you all. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Love you.